Welcome to Beside the Burn for Thursday the 21st of September. In our new format, each Thursday we're going to tackle a question uh, that you've asked and if anyone has any questions, please do give them to me. I'd love to cover uh, things that you're interested in and things that you're talking about. And today's question um, is linked into what we've been thinking about um, from Leviticus. And so it's a good time uh, to tackle this question and hopefully uh, give you a little bit of insight. Maybe you have um, thought this uh, as well as uh, the person who asked me. And the, the question sort of goes along the lines of, of this. Why is there so much blood in the Old Testament? Why is there so much that is about sacrificing animals? Why is blood being shed? Why does there need to be this whole emphasis on blood? And then as we move into the New Testament, why does Jesus have to shed his blood? Surely there would be some better way for all of this to work out without blood being shed and without blood being involved. Now, uh, whenever I'm answering these questions, I can't possibly go into all the details of them. There's maybe little bits that I'm, I'm missing out and um, I do apologise for that. So if you want uh, to know more about any of these things, ask me. I'll, I'll do them in more detail uh, again. But what we find uh, primarily is that life is in the blood and therefore blood is very important in the Bible. But the whole sacrificial system and the animals that are sacrificed and then Jesus that is sacrificed all links back to the beginning of the story in Genesis. And in Genesis chapter 3, we're given a little hint as to what is to come. And we can see why all this blood is involved. So Genesis chapter 3 is the occasion when Adam and Eve are in the garden and the serpent comes and tempts them to eat from the tree that God has warned them not to eat from. So in Genesis 3 and verse 1 we read, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And we realise that Satan here is coming to tempt and is twisting God's words, making a little inaccuracy here uh, so that it throws Adam and Eve off guard, as it were, and they have to think about what God has said to them and what the prohibition actually is that God has made. So in Genesis chapter 3, um, Satan is coming and uh, making this accusation. So Adam and Eve then um, give in to what the serpent is saying. They eat from the tree that they've been told not to eat from. And in that act of eating, then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realised that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. So this verse 7 in Genesis chapter 3 is very important because we see the consequence of sin and we see the human beings trying to deal with the consequences of sin and failing quite considerably. So whenever their eyes are opened because they've eaten of the knowledge of good and evil, they realise that they are naked. So this is the consequence of their sin. And because up until this point, it, they didn't care that they were naked. They didn't know that it wasn't a problem. But now they realise it because of their sin. And they realise that they need to cover up their sin. They need to cover up their nakedness. And the way that they do that is through fig leaves. They take the fig leaves and they try to sew them together and make coverings for themselves. And if there are ever any illustrations of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, they're usually covered with fig leaves. And that's the, the picture that we have in our minds. But this is inadequate. This is like us 
trying to cover up our sin, whenever we've done something wrong, trying to uh, deal with it, trying to brush it under the carpet, trying to make it so that nobody notices that we've sinned. But underneath the covering that we put over our sin, the sin is still there. So it has to be dealt with. God comes walking in the garden and Adam and Eve are nowhere to be seen because they have hidden. And Adam says, whenever God says, where are you? He says, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And God said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree I commanded you not to eat from? Immediately, God realized what Adam had done. And Adam had confessed in saying that he was naked, what he had done. So then there are a number of verses that deal with the curses that God puts upon Adam and Eve because of the sin that they have committed. They are going to be cursed in that they're going to have to work hard um, and in, in the garden it's going to, or in the world is going to be difficult and the woman's going to have pains and childbirth uh, and so on and so forth. There are various curses that are made. But then God deals with the sin in a way that Adam and Eve could not deal with it. Verse 21, we're told, the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. This is now not the the foolish attempt of Adam and Eve getting fig leaves and trying to cover up. This is now God offering a more permanent solution to the problem. And the sin that they have committed does need to be dealt with. It needs to be covered over. And the way that God does this is to make them garments of skin. And here is a significant point in the history of the world because this is the first time that we hear of anything being killed. This is the first time that blood is shed. To make a garment of skin, you have to kill an animal and then take the skin off the animal. So the animal is killed, the blood is shed, And sin is covered up in that act. So here is the hint as to what is to come. Because then whenever we get to the tabernacle and to the temple, whenever the people sin, animals are killed, blood is shed, and the sin is dealt with, just as it was here in Genesis. But This clothing that has been given to Adam and Eve isn't adequate to completely deal with their sin. The sacrificial system, as we've been thinking about all week, isn't enough to deal with sin completely. We have to go a step further into the New Testament when Jesus comes along and Jesus offers himself. He is killed, his blood is shed, but because he is perfect and far superior to anything that's been offered in the Old Testament, sin is dealt with completely once and for all in his act of sacrifice. So why so much blood? Because it is the way that sin is dealt with through death and shedding of blood and sacrifice. And sin is the biggest problem that we have. Oh, why do they keep going on about sin? Because sin is the one thing that stops us having a relationship with God. And having a relationship with God is the most important thing that we can ever do. On Sunday, we're asking the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? We want to be holy so that we can come into God's presence and so that we can be with him. And so here we have the reason why there's so much blood and why so much emphasis on the blood because it is how we get into relationship with God again. So I hope that makes sense and shows you yet again how the Bible is all linked together from the Old Testament right through to the New Testament, right through to our lives today. Nothing is there by accident.
but it is all there to point us towards God and to draw us into relationship with him. So let's pray together. And uh, as we uh, pray today, we're asked to remember the international meeting point in Belfast and the work that goes on there. And we are also asked to pray for our Presbyterian congregations in Fermoy and care in the Republic of Ireland. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the way that you deal with sin. Lord, we confess that often we try to do it ourselves. We try to cover up and it's just like sewing fig leaves together. It does not work. But Lord, you are the one who covers over sin. You are the one who removes sin through Jesus Christ and his blood shed for us. And therefore, we praise you today. Lord God, once again, we pray for our Presbyterian Church. We pray for the International Meeting Point in Belfast. And we thank you for that work that goes on. And we pray that the building work um, would be finished in time for the reopening. We also pray, Lord, for smaller congregations throughout our land. And we think of Fermoy and Care. And we pray for those congregations as they meet each week and that to worship and as they witness to the local community. And may they be able to share your good news with all that they meet. So, Lord, be with us, we pray, and help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.